Do you know about the Asian influencer cult thing? Cause like, cause like, <laughs> I know about the Asian influencer cult thing. Hi, I'm Before we start off this video, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. If you are anti-text work, don't follow me. Also, don't watch this video. Also, instead of saying, I will be saying text work because I don't know if YouTube is like TikTok in the way that I can't say certain words. And lastly, this video is going to be dealing with certain topics such as use. Um, and people just being genuinely, uh, weird. There's some weirdos in this one. Okay. I also forgot to mention, don't be a weirdo to anybody that I talk about in this video. I'm not about to get cleans for that. You hear me? Who is Princess Mai? She's an Instagrammer, influencer, content creator, what have you. She's about 607,000 followers on YouTube, 220,000 followers on Instagram, and I believe over 20,000 followers on Twitter. She has a fairly big audience that mainly consists from what I've seen is a very large demographic of people who are on the younger side because her content seems to be a lot more cutesy Disney-like, which makes you think, well, what's all this then? I'll get into it. Colette Pervet, also known as Domina Colette, is a self-described dom, mom, dominatrix, shamanatrix, creatrix, educatrix, I feel like I'm leaving a couple of other things out. She uses tricks a lot, like the bunny. She's been a professional dominatrix since 2005 and has a PhD and master's in education and I believe human psychology. She's been in a lot of online spaces, specifically, um, I believe on Reddit, and I think she even has a article with Vogue where she talks about text work and being a text worker and being a dom and what it is like. And, and she's done a lot of advocacy for text workers and people who are in her field. Olivia is a content creator, influencer, and also a text worker. I believe she was looking into getting more onto the dom side of text work. That's why, that's how her and Colette came together because Colette is a dom mom. David Dave P, also known as Mups, is Colette Pervet's boyfriend who is super loaded. Michelle Fawn is Michelle Fawn. You know who she is. Now that that's all out of the way, let's get into the meat and the potatoes. So in May 2021, May comes out as gay. She makes a whole entire YouTube video about it where she starts talking about how she's felt repulsed by men. They're not really her thing. And her online presence, specifically on Twitter, starts to showcase more sapphic content. Speaking of which, happy pride. I'm seeing from online, from the lolcow threads, from the Reddit groups, and also from the YouTube comments that people have been questioning the validity of her gay slash sapphicness. And to that I have to say, May is only 25 or 26 because she just had a birthday and experimenting slash figuring out your sexuality during that this time isn't weird you guys are weird for commenting on it stop it it's weird you're weirdos my and olivia go back at least seven years and i want to say as an influencer 
knowing somebody and being mutuals with them is not the same thing as being friends, which is another thing that I keep seeing online, that they've been best friends forever. No, they've just worked together and have been around in the same circles. There's a difference. So for the past 12 months, Maya's audience started to realize that there's a dramatic shift inside of her content, specifically on Instagram. She's flying on private jets. She's buying up all these luxury goods. And as someone who is an influencer, I can let you know that once you reach a certain amount of sponsorships, a certain amount of brands, then yeah, sure, you can totally afford a luxurious lifestyle. But in regards to the rest of this video, it's a flag. Now the word on the street is Colette Prevet, Princess Might, and Olivia all met at an aerial silk class. Now if that's the actual truth or if that's just something somebody made up on TikTok, I'm not sure. Per. Anyways, Colette Prevet starts to make special guest appearances on Princess Might's Instagram and also on her Twitter feed. Mind you, in a now-deleted YouTube video, Princess Mai comes out as polyamorous, saying that Colette Pervet and I believe also Olivia are in her little polyamorous group. Fine. Whatever. Mind you, majority of this whole entire video is, is an advertisement for Colette Pervet's mistress classes, where Colette Pervet is teaching other women how to get into their feminine power in teaching them about their femininity. Now I told you earlier, Princess Mai and Olivia are in their 20s. What I didn't tell you is that Colette Prevet is in her 40s. You need to remember that. Speaking of age, you gotta keep reminding yourself who is Princess Mai's main audience. Do you remember? Sorry. I had to make myself some tea. <sighs> Good soup. Now, I think that it should be said. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with polyamory, all right? I don't. It's not my personal cup of tea, but it's not, it's not meant for me. That's it. It's whatever. The way in this video, first of all, the way that they are posed, the way that they look, the way that the video comes off, the way that it is a full-on advertisement, all weird. But the way that they talk about a polyamorous relationship is like, oh, if one partner cannot fulfill your needs, then just get another one. I don't think that's how polyamory is supposed to work, or at least that's not how it works in the Steve Bucky reader fan fictions <laughs> that I read. <laughs> I should edit that out. In the video, Olivia also comes in. She makes her own little debut. She's also wearing lingerie. Now, somebody, somebody's name makes an appearance inside of this video. P, you remember him? I gave you a little introduction about him earlier. I didn't talk about him fully because I wanted to wait until, you know, now to talk about him. Colette talks about P and talks about how Mai and P get along handsomely and how Mai and P are also seeing each other. Remember how I said Colette was 40? Apparently, allegedly, I don't know. David, P, Mups, is in his 50s. Now let's talk about Colette Prevet's classes and also the blog posts. I want to say there's nothing wrong with, you know, girl bossing and um, getting girls to pay money to get into their femininity. Girls do it on TikTok literally all the time, making y'all buy their little ebooks. That's beside the point. Anyway, Colette Prevet sells these classes that are highly expensive. She also has these little tea parties that you can join if you can shell out. 200 plus dollars for about an hour of your time. Now, all of this already put together, red flags, weird. What makes everything worse and what makes everything weirder are the blog posts. The blog posts?
there's a trigger warning for this section where I'm going to be talking about use, underage slash teenage girl, unsafe intercourse. Those are the basic warnings. Yes, you do see the sun coming up. The blog posts. Colette Pervet ran a blog called Pervet.com, which she believed for years was behind a paywall that only her customers could see. Little did she know, the whole entire thing, public. Now the one smart thing that Colette Prevet did was make sure that everyone on this blog had code names, but it's not like it was super hard to figure out who was who. For example, and in one of the blog entries, Colette Pervet says, and I quote, she deserves to be treated like the princess she is. Heck, that's even the moniker that she goes by. We can also see in the blog post that David P is also been gifting my things and that they're giving, getting along. Colette Pervet refers to my as her little sister friend and her sister wife which is weird. In this blog entry, it's pretty obvious that M9 is clearly my and O is for Olivia. Both of them are promoting these classes of Colette Pervets so that they don't have to pay the outrageous fees that it costs to take them. It's a win-win situation for everyone, I guess, technically, except one more time. Remember, who is Princess Mai's demographic? When you go back and you click on the original video where May first starts to promote Colette Pervet's classes, there is no age range for these classes. Nowhere in the description box does it say 18 plus only. That's suspicious. All right. For me, watching this, it made more sense that Olivia would be promoting these classes, seeing as how she was planning on becoming a dominatrix in the first place, and even got her own page on Colette Pervet's blog. But my, and in this blog post, it's pretty obvious that Mai is seeing herself, hey, I don't think that I should really be promoting this because it's not really meant for my audience. Now, again. I have never been in a polyamorous relationship. I do not understand what it's like. I only know what it's like through fan fiction. But there are aspects of Colette Pervet's blog that are odd to me, such as this one where it's obvious that she is in a lot of emotional pain. And there are aspects of her blog, which is all archived, where you can see that she is like in some sort of distress and that David P doesn't really seem to care. And it's sad, but also, here she is again referring to another woman as her sister wife. Now, when I say that some of these blog posts are weird, I don't think that you guys understand the level of weird that they are, so I'm just gonna read off a couple of them. I feel so matriarchal with X, who is a sugar baby, around i tell p oh yeah i feel patriarchal p says it's like having a teenage daughter around yeah but better i said because it's one you can now mind you this is not the first time that she has talked about teenagers teenage girls in a way that makes me uncomfortable. It's also fairly apparent through these blog posts that David P has a thing for young 20-something Asian girls, women, girls, 20-somethings. Now in these blog posts, it is very apparent that David has a lot of money. Colette also has a lot of money. They are two very rich individuals. Let's think about what it means when you have two older people who have a lot of money who are 
raking in these girls, that's a power imbalance. Raking these girls into relationships, that is a power imbalance. And if you know one thing about me, I love to talk about a power imbalance. I also want to say that I personally do not think that there is anything wrong with sugaring or having a sugar baby or going on seeking arrangement. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, you know. What is odd is the use of talking about these younger women, the use of throwing around money to have power over people, and um, the use of where there are more blog posts about. Now, in regards to use, I also, again, do not necessarily see anything wrong with use, but money, power, intentional, forceful, now, it's not just your everyday run-of-the-mill party favors that they're all doing. No. It's Molly. It's K, which I'm pretty sure is ketamine. It's C, which is just skiing down slopes. Toad venom, which I have no clue what that is. Shrooms, acid, and um, just regular jugular. I believe that there is this interview with Carly Squirtino, the same woman who does Slut Ever for Vogue, where Colette Pervet literally talks about how she has gotten some man, I believe from Mexico, to come up so that they could do a version of ayahuasca together as a group. If these parties have a lot of and also and young women, that's not exactly curating a space where I think is meant to have these younger women feel empowered. Are you seeing the web? that I am weaving? A vast majority, if not all, of the sugar babies that P has had are Asian. It's serving fetish. Now, in regards to this whole situation, Mai has already posted a very short thing about it. Olivia has posted a very short thing about it. Some other influencers who were friends of theirs have posted a couple of things about it. Now, here are my thoughts on the whole entire thing. Do I think that it is a cult? No. What I think it is, is that it is two older people with money, with power, with who are using it to their advantage in regards to having more power over young Asian women. I understand why people are mad at my, why people are mad at Olivia. But I also want to turn this around and say, I think that because of TikTok, because of YouTube, because of the internet in general, young women think that the work industry is fun and glamorous and easy. And you can see the things that it gets you, like luxury and don't understand the dangers and the way that people, especially people with money, will manipulate you and the people around you to get exactly what it is that they want. I think that my May made a lot of mistakes and should be ridiculed for that. But past that, I think that there should be way more vitriol for David and Colette Prevet. These are two people who have actively throughout the years facilitated weirdo behavior towards young Asian women and continue to talk weirdly about young Asian women. That, all that that was on her blog that was just on her blog. None of us know what they sound like behind closed doors. And that's what freaks me out. I would love to know your thoughts and your opinions. You know, let me know. I also think, just like I said in my spirituality video, that spiritualists will make you believe that you are lacking something 
in your life, in your soul, what have you, that they can help you get, that they can help you find. It's always like you're lacking something and I can help you fill that hole, <laughs> literally. Sorry. I think also people are failing to mention slash come back to the fact that she's been a dominatrix, so she knows how to ruffle somebody up. And also, she, ha she has a doctorate. She has a PhD. You think that her knowledge about like human psychology and all of that, plus her dominatrix training, plus the fact that she has been helping this man get 20 year old women to sleep with him and be weird and refer to them as sister wives and get them to be okay with being called sister wives and little sisters. Like you don't think that that doesn't take a level of manipulation. Colette Pervet isn't really getting any heat for this. And in fact has classes set up for August. All of her accounts have been put down into private and her blog has also either been wiped or is also now privated. Some people don't even know David's last name or which specific company he works for or that he's like CEO of. I couldn't find it. I've been searching for weeks. So I understand having my and having Olivia, Olivia to a degree, catch heat. But Colette Pervet and Mr. David P. Muffs they're not getting enough. Anyways, I would love to hear your thoughts down in my comments. I'm so sorry for the audio. Um, my mic keeps going in and out. I cannot afford a new one. You get what you get. If you would like to support me and support the channel, um, I have my socials linked down below and also my Patreon if you would like to join it. It's only one dollar unless you want to sign up for a higher tier, like the one where you get collages from me every month. Um, this month's collage is this. I think that it's cool. It's two brains on top of each other on top of coral. I think that it's dope. And more importantly, um, if you buy this print from my shop, all of the proceeds besides what it costs to ship will be going to my friend Yaya to help them um, find a home because they are currently homeless. So if you would like to support me and or, and or help my friends, and if you don't want to do either of those things, I'm also going to be linking Yaya's GoFundMe down below her. That would be dope. That's all I got, I think. The sun's literally coming up. Shout out to my motherfucking patrons, dog. You guys have been so patient with me. I'm so sorry. And after I am done doing this next video, which are both of my Amber Heard videos, I will actually be taking a break, but the way that I'm going to come back with a vengeance I have so much good content planned for y'all. It's insane. All right, that's what I got. Bye-bye.